right, guys, I'm here with beekeeper Andy. As you guys know, this is my uncle Andy and this is my aunt Jill and they are beekeepers and they're here to talk to us today because in our class we're talking about pollination and pollinators. So we had several questions for you and we're just going to kind of go through those with you right now um, and we'll get started. Um, so how long have you guys been beekeepers? It's been about six years. I think this may be our seventh season. Okay. And what type of gear and equipment do you guys have to wear in order to be safe? So as you can see, Beekeeper Jill is wearing a full suit. Okay, that's a beekeeper suit, right? And um, are you able to turn the camera around and I can show? Yes. I can show my setup. Okay. So uh, for me to be safe, I, I generally put on a veil with a hat like this. And this keeps the bees uh, you know, out of my face. And then other equipment to help keep us safe is the smoker. So the smoker will uh, will help calm the bees down a little bit. And it keeps, uh, it just kind of keeps the situation under control. And then the last piece of equipment is not really for safety, but this is a tool called a, a hive tool. And uh, I use this for prying and scraping. And we're going to get into the beehive here in a minute. And I'll be able to demonstrate these tools for you. Awesome. All right. So about how many bees do you have? Well, uh, the question could be how many beehives do we have? Currently, we have one. So understand this is uh, March. Uh, it's not officially springtime, but it is warm enough today to get into the bees. So we've just come out of winter. And in winter, it's common for some bees to be lost. So uh, we went into winter with two hives. We come out of winter with one. So it's a 50% success rate for us this year. And I'm not complaining. Okay. Yeah. If you wanted to know literally how many bees do we have? Thousands. In the one okay. hive, I expect there to be at least 10,000 bees in this hive. But when we open it up, another thing that I think is fun for you to know is that this will be the first time this year that we've opened up this hive. Again, we're coming out of winter and during winter, we don't mess with the bees. Awesome, so I'm excited that we're gonna get to be the first people to experience with you guys inside the beehive. Um, yeah. So you kind of went over some of the tools that you use to take care of the bees, but um, can you talk to us about where do you get these bees? Like, have you rescued bees? Like, can you kind of walk us through that process? Well, when I originally got into beekeeping, I did go to a fella and buy some bees, but that was the only time I've bought any bees. Uh, the rest of my bees have come from rescues, mostly from swarm rescues. So swarms happen in the spring and early summer when bees are multiplying and uh, they'll half of the bees will go out with the queen to establish another colony. Occasionally I'll do rescues where bees have moved into somebody's building, maybe their home or a shed. And then we literally go in there and, and uh, take the bees out and we rescue them alive and bring them home. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, um, so another question that we had was, how long does it take your bees to produce honey usually? Uh, well, bees, <laughs> bees produce honey uh, mostly in the, in the spring and summer. And uh, it depends on the, the maturity of the colony, but you can get a pretty good harvest of, of honey during one year off of a, an established colony. Okay. And then what are some things that you have taken and made from the honey from your bees? Well, the, the honey itself, we typically put in jars and then we just put that on our food. But some, some products from the hive uh, namely from the wax, not the honey, but from the wax. Some of those products include lip balm, which is our favorite. I've got lip balm in a tin here and I've got lip balm in a tube. And so I always keep a tube of lip balm available to keep my lips kissable. <laughs> All right, and then there was a famous question. Several students wrote this question down and they had to know, have you been stung? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. we, we assumed that that was probably the case, but yes. that was a famous question from so, those kiddos. Now, I would never encourage anybody to get stung, but I personally believe that the bee venom uh, is actually healthy to get, it, to get stung occasionally. 
but we do have to remember some people are born allergic and so we'd never get stung on purpose you know uh i've i've had experiences as a child where i got stung by bees and so i knew coming into this that i didn't have any natural born allergies to it you know so uh i i typically go like this with just a veil and a hat i don't usually wear the gloves i go i go hands free and so it's it's not uncommon for me to get stung on my hands um, and then they just wanted to know the students, like, do you like being a beekeeper? You know, what really kind of got you into this, this beekeeping? Well, I saw a news report uh, on TV or something, you know, where they were talking about colony collapse disorder, uh, which was a phenomenon that started about 10 or 15 years ago where bee colonies would disappear. The bees would disappear. And they couldn't find them. They didn't know where they went. They didn't know if they were alive or dead. But it really, it really got bad. You know, where where thousands and thousands of colonies of bees were disappearing. They called it colony collapse disorder. And I found it intriguing. So I, I googled colony collapse disorder, and I landed on YouTube where I started watching videos about it. And YouTube kept feeding me videos about bees and beekeeping. And I finally saw a video of a woman who was tending her bees on her front porch. And that's when it occurred to me, wait a minute, she's keeping bees on her front porch. Could I keep bees in my backyard? And of course you can. That's awesome. And then we've been learning about pollinating flowers. So your bees are typically in the hive, so they're not really getting that opportunity, right, to go pollinate flowers. Well, let's step around to the front of the hive and see if we can catch any of the bees coming and going because they're actually collecting pollen now. Even at this early point in the spring, we're going to this colony over here. And if you'll step over to that side and get them at this angle, you may be able to see a bee coming home uh, with bee pollen. All right, okay. so they are they are actively collecting pollen this early in the spring, even though there's very little uh, flowers blooming at all. And so these bees just kind of come and go as they please. That's right. They're not captive. Uh, we. Okay. coming coming back right now i don't know if if we're blocking their their path or or uh, why but but uh, you know for the past couple of days i've been watching the bees and they have been bringing in pollen awesome that was all the questions that my students have but if there's anything else that you would like to show us or to share with us we would be more than willing to just learn some more information from you all right well let's get in here and see how the bees are doing what do you say i say it sounds awesome Also, the ones that do, do all the. Could you repeat what did you say about the ones that. Uh, um, a little bit. Yes. All right, if you want to show us if you can. Okay, so uh, you got the bit about the, the girl bees doing all the work. We didn't. Yeah, the girl bees one. are the ones that, that go out and, and collect all the pollen. Um, okay. The guys hang out in the hive. Okay. Yes, all right, so we're going to start by smoking the front. Okay. Um, we're just letting the bees know that we're coming in and this will create in them a natural response to the smoke that kind of calms them down and it'll cause some of the bees to gorge on honey uh, because in a forest where bees live naturally if there was a forest fire they would smell the smoke and as a natural response to that they'll gorge on honey just in case something happens to their colony to their to their hive in in the fire so i've puffed a little smoke in the lid take off the top lid and that reveals what we call the inner cover so this is a lid on the inside and the bees glue everything together. And they use a substance we call propolis. All right, so you can see the propolis, it looks like glue and it's everywhere. 
and they do use that to seal up the hive. There's all kinds of those beetles in there. Yeah. So here's a small hive beetle. It just went down inside there. Give them a little puff of smoke here. See that small hive beetle? He's not our friend. We're going to take care of him. Okay. Then I'm going to crack open this hive box from the one below it so we can look under it. And we're going to see if there's anything going on that's notable here. Now, remember, this is the first. Look at them, guys. Look at them. Wow. Aren't they beautiful. Can you so hear them? them? Listen. Can you hear? A little hear bit. Buzzing? Okay, so I'm going to give them another puff of smoke. This will kind of make some of them move down. And do you just use the smoke to kind of help the bees to move around? Is that the purpose of that? Right. So I just moved them down off of the uh, off of the tops of, of the bars. Uh-huh. All right, I'm going to set this one aside. So when I pick it up, I feel it to see how, how heavy it is, okay? And this one is not very heavy. So okay. that tells me that there's probably not there's probably not much going on in that top box. The bees probably don't need that right now. Do you guys see how the, the frames are glued to the side? Yeah, I can see it looks very, very gooey. Yes, and it smells really nice. It's a real earthy sort of smell. It can be used in tinctures for first aid. Oh, wow. So this here is extra wax that's on tops of the frames and we don't need that extra wax getting in the way. So I usually will scrape that off and I save all the wax for making, uh, for making lip balms and stuff like that. See the bees are in here looking up at me. They're like, wait a minute, what's going on? It's springtime, <laughs> almost. A Little bit of smoke will get them to go down. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna separate these boxes so I can get a look down in here before I start taking frames apart. Wow. Say hello to your new friends, guys. So many bees. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And there's more down here. Hello. Well, let's see how much this one weighs. Yeah, this one doesn't weigh much either. I'm going to set it aside. Now, this is the bottom one here. And in the, in the, in the wintertime, they, they usually move up, right? So there's probably not a whole lot going on in this box. Let's see if I can get a frame to come out. It's been glued together all winter. We're noticing a lot of hive beetles. You see these little black bugs that are moving around? Uh-huh. Those are called hive beetles. Okay. And they they live right alongside of the bees, but they're not good. So the bees will will often corral those hive beetles into little traps that they can make. They make little traps to catch the hive beetles in and keep the hive beetles from tearing up everything. Gotcha. So we're going to take out this first one here and it looks like there's not any action going on on this one. So yeah, so see this one here, this is the plastic foundation okay. and this is, this is the wax cone. And so on this particular frame, the bees haven't really even started using it. So I'm just gonna set that one aside. And I can look down in this box and I can see, again, there's not much activity down here in this box. This one actually has less going on than that top one did. So I'm gonna get this one out of the way. We don't need this one being on the bottom. And in fact, I think until the bees, until the bees get started, uh, reproducing, we probably don't even need to put that box back on there. Okay. You can see there's more bees in this box than there was in either of the other two. So why don't we see if we can get in here and find what's going on. Are these bees healthy or are they struggling? What's going on? So I first have to kind of separate them a little bit because they are glued together with propolis. So you see why it's important to have a hive tool. 
be able to pry and pull stuff out. All right. So all of this, the bees have made all of this. They're little wow. tiny bodies, and they work together and make all of this um, wax out of those little tiny bodies. Isn't that amazing? Yes. So the first thing I notice on this on this frame here is that it's empty. The wax comb is empty. Okay. Here's a tiny bit of honey over here. You see this honey? Yes. That's a tiny bit of honey on this frame. So I'm a little bit worried. Do these bees have enough food to make it until uh, until springtime? Again, we're, we're not officially in spring yet. Right. So there could still be some cold weather. But look here inside this frame. Can oh, you I see wish the, you guys could smell it. Can you see the shiny liquid? Yes, and it looks darker in that area as well. Yeah, so this darkness comes from where they have raised baby bees. We call it brood. So when it's dark like that, they've raised baby bees in that area before. But now they're putting nectar in here. This so. one's depositing or um, getting a drink. I'm not sure. Let's see your little... Her little backside's just shaking. That's how they breathe. Oh, that's how they breathe. I yeah, didn't know that. It's the in and out of their breath. So they're, that bee's little body moving, her backside moving is her breathing. Awesome. So this is good that they're, that they're able to collect nectar already. So that, that's a healthy sign. But so far, this hive has not shown me that they're very, very strong. In fact, I'm afraid this hive may be weaker than I originally thought it was. Let's keep, let's keep inspecting to see if we find anything like maybe the queen. Okay. It would be really cool. Look at that. Wow, that's a lot Aren't more bees. Beautiful. Like. Now in this frame, we have a lot more food. So over in here, we have pollen. And you see how that pollen is shiny? Yes. Okay, so they, they combine pollen with nectar and it ferments to become what beekeepers call bee bread. And bee bread makes great food for raising baby bees. Wow. Yeah, and so I'm going to take a look at this side as well. And I see more nectar. That's a great sign. I do not yet see the queen. So I would love to be able to find the queen. And how do you the identify the queen? Is she's a lot bigger. For? She's a lot bigger than the other bees. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when you see her, it's it's very apparent that you have seen the queen because she's so much bigger. All right. You see how I have bees in the way right here? Yes. If I take my smoker and I smoke them a little bit, they'll scatter out of the way. And the smoke doesn't hurt them at all. It just aggravates them a little bit and they move. All right, so I got this one apart. Let's set it up here. I like to be gentle so I don't squash too many bees. I still, I see some more nectar. Can you guys, Brittany, can you hear that? Yes. All right, let's spin it around. And you see this one here? That's uh -huh. what they call, they call that a queen cup, which means that the bees are, or were at some point, preparing to make a new queen. Now, I'm trying to look down in the queen cup to see if there's any, anything in there, like an egg or larva. It's difficult for me to see through this, uh, through this veil that I'm wearing. Mm -hmm but I don't see anything in there. Okay. And I still haven't seen the queen. We don't always get to see the queen though. And I, let me tell you another theory that's going through my mind. Okay. With there being a queen cup there, if we could find a queen cell, we might know, has this, has this colony already swarmed? It's, it's really too early for that. But it's possible. I caught a swarm as early as March 15th one year, and today's March 9th. Yeah. We have had some warm weather. So it, it's possible that the reason there's not more bees than this 
is that maybe these bees have already swarmed, but the confirmation to that would be if we find an empty queen cell. A queen cell is different from a queen cup because that means that a, a queen has actually been raised inside the cell. It, it, it will have either been sealed or sealed and then broken open by the new queen. Let's take a look at the other side. I don't see any queen cells, but I do see a lot of pollen and nectar. So that's great. We don't have to worry about these bees starving. Awesome. Yep. So if we could just find some eggs or the queen, because uh, I'm thinking the queen should be should have been laying some eggs by now. Let's set this off to the side and take a look in that other box. I'm gonna put this one on the bottom. It was in the middle, but now it's gonna be on the bottom because it has more, uh, it has more bees, it has more nectar and pollen. And that they one generally, on the bottom- Do they generally go to the bottom? Is that where they no. generally swarm towards? Well, um, in the winter, they move upward. As they consume their food, they move upward. And so as you saw, that bottom box was empty. So what we want to do is put it on the top so they can begin to move up toward it and build it out. But, but I don't think I'm going to put that one back in there today. I think I'm going to leave it out so they don't have all this empty space to protect from the hive beetles and any other pests that might come in. So we're gonna move the bees off the tops of the frames with smoke. And I wanna break into this one. And it looks like this end one doesn't have a lot of comb on it. So this will be the one that I'll start with. There is some comb in the middle. There's one that didn't make it. Remember guys, never, ever, 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 ever spray bees, ever. Don't if, spray bees, call me. That's right, <laughs> call somebody that will come get them because we depend on them for our food. Absolutely, we've been talking a lot about that in class, how we depend on pollinators so we can have flowers and plants, fruits and vegetables. This one is dry, but it's a complete frame of honeycomb. That's awesome. There's a tiny, tiny bit of nectar in it, mm -hmm. but it's completely dry. Now I'm just going to arbitrarily put it over here for now, and I'll probably leave it there because that one's going to be on the bottom. And we see a lot of bees in this area here. Uh -huh. Makes me wonder if that might be where our queen is. Because they'll be really protective of her. They'll always gather around the queen. Now this is interesting because you see here along the top of this frame, that's all honey. Wow. So they had that stored for the winter and they how didn't do you, have even- How do you get the honey out of that? Uh, so, if, so if this frame was completely full of nothing but honey, in other words, if it all looked like this right here, mm -hmm. then what we would do is we would take it inside and we would use a fork to break the, the, to break the cap. So when it's sealed, we call it capping. Mm -hmm. We would break this cap with a fork all over the whole, both sides, right? And okay. then I would put it in my extractor. So we have a, a, a machine, if you will, it's like a big barrel and inside it, it spins the honey out of the frames. So we have a crank, we turn the crank, the frames all spin inside the barrel and it, and it uh, forces the honey to come out. And then it collects, you know, it runs down the sides of the barrel and we have a spigot on the bottom of the barrel that we're able to let the honey out. And we put, the, put that out uh, into jars. Just slowly. It's important when you're working with bees to not get in a hurry. See, there's some, uh, some honeycomb stuck to the bottom of this one. 
-hmm. And since that's out of place and it, it really doesn't need to be there, I'm going to take it off and we'll add that to our storage bucket. More honey, more nectar, more honey, more nectar. That's good. Awesome. That's what we want to see. But still no sign of the queen. And no sign that they've actually made a new queen. Honey, nectar. We have some, we have some uh, wild comb. Beekeepers usually call the wild comb burr comb. No sign will of you, the queen. Will you leave that extra honeycomb on the bottom? Is that what you said it was? Yeah, uh, a lot of times I'll scrape it off. See this drop right here? Mm -hmm. That's a drop of honey. That is a drop of, can y'all see it? I, there we go. Can, That's yes. a drop of yummy right there. So good <laughs> for you. So, will help fight your allergies. So here's what we do with an extra drop of honey. Get it on the finger and put it in the mouth. <laughs> Oh, that's delicious. Yes, very, very good. So we're gonna take out this last one. Now this one is kind of stuck to the side. So I put my tool down there and knock it off from the sides. Okay, and that's very normal for the bees to attach it to the sides like that. So getting into your hives when uh, you're in spring and summer, getting into your hives regularly helps prevent from everything getting glued together so bad. Okay. But it's not necessary to get into them. You know, the bees really don't need our help because they can survive on their own in the wild. Uh, the reason why we put bees in boxes is for our benefit, not for the bees benefit. Okay. So throughout the course of this inspection here, I've seen no evidence of the queen. Okay. Now I'm not gonna panic, but the bees won't survive without a queen, right? Yes. And the one reason why I'm not gonna panic is because there's nothing I can do about it right now. This time of year, there's not uh, any place where you can go and get queens. So what I would do is I, I'm gonna reduce this colony down to just the two boxes, and then we're gonna wait because the queen might be in here and it just might've been too cold for her to start laying eggs yet. Okay. But if she's not in here, uh, did they, did they uh, swarm already? And maybe if they did swarm, although we didn't find a queen cell, if they did swarm, then the new queen may be out getting mated and then she might come back. So we certainly don't want to overreact, you know, and get all worried that we didn't find the queen. And how, many they, egg, how many eggs does um, one queen bee have? How many eggs can she lay in a she, lifetime? She, well, oh, in a lifetime, you'd have to do the calculation, but in a day, she can lay 1,500 to 2,500. Wow, when, that's a lot. <laughs> when you're in the peak of season, she's laying eggs all day long, you know, like 2,000 a day. And she never leaves the hive except for her mating flight unless they swarm and she goes with them. <laughs> yeah. All she does is lays eggs. Wow. So I'm going to put these frames all back in here and I'm going to push that back together because it came apart when I fried it. I'm going to push these frames together as close as I can. We're almost done. And then before I put it back on here, there's still a frame missing out of this one. So let's put one in here. And I like this one. Now we have this third box over here that I took off, remember? Mm -hmm. So what shall we do with this box? You said that you're gonna discard it for right now because you want your bees to fill up in the other two boxes, correct? Yes, so the first thing I'm going to do before I take it out of action is I am going to go through it a little more carefully just to make sure that the queen is not in it. We would hate to do something to jeopardize our queen because like I said, without a queen, the colony cannot make it. All right, and 
just going to push that down in there. It's got so much propolis on it. You see all this propolis here? We do, yes. It's got so much propolis on it that I'm having a hard time getting it back in there. Now, when I'm doing this, you notice that I have no gloves on and I've not been stung. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes the bees, sometimes the bees will land on my skin, but I just, I just let them, I let them alone. I don't do anything to them. Gotcha. Because they're not out to get me. Bees are not of a nature to, to be attackers. Now they will sometimes be defenders, but they don't usually become attackers. <clears throat> All right. So. This box was sitting over here away from the hive and already all of the bees have left this box. Wow. Okay. So now I'm able to look through here and I'm able to see that there's no bees, there's no queen cells. There's one frame missing, which I have sitting over there. So what I'm gonna do with this, with this box here is I can turn this into a bait hive. Now a bait hive is a hive that you set out that you hope to attract a swarm, right? So I'll get another lid and another bottom, and then I'll take this box here just like it is because it's got the bee smell. Okay. And I'll set it somewhere else so that if any, if any uh, colonies around here, including this one, if any of them swarm, perhaps they might find this box and move in. So that's a good use for those kind of boxes. All right, we're gonna take this one and set it up here. So we're putting everything back together. So when you're keeping bees and you go in to inspect a, a colony or a hive, you find yourself having to make decisions like I made here. I made the decision that they don't need that box there because that box was empty to begin with. Now here's the lid and on the lid, we have some small hive beetles. And I just like to help the bees out a little bit by getting rid of any small hive beetles that I encounter. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not friends to the bees. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to help these bees get back in here. We've got bees on both sides. Just going to give it a little pop. There's a few more small hive beetles as we get ready to close it down. And you see all the bees have gone inside the hole. So now I can put the lid on. And there you have. And we have completed our first inspection of 2021. And it's successful because we still have a colony of bees. There is some doubt because we don't know for sure about the queen. We didn't see the queen, we didn't see any eggs, and we didn't see any queen cells. So we don't, we don't know for sure if this colony is really gonna make it. So I hope y'all have enjoyed this. We have, thank you so much for this opportunity to share the things that you guys are so passionate about, these bees and sharing all the information about the beehive. It was really cool. And I know the students are really gonna love it. Fantastic. Well, we have a lot of fun with it. And remember, don't spray bees, call me. <laughs> Thank you, beekeeper Andy and beekeeper Jill. Thank you, bye-bye.